Hey guys, hope everyone is going well. Uh, it's been a while, been MIA, uh, missing in action for a, a little bit, been out in the country down to uh, Bustleton for a few days. Um, so been in and out with internet service, so back uh, back in the office now, uh, ready to, to smash out some more live streams for you guys. So what I'm going to be what I'm going to be talking about. I've actually got a question from Levi, young Levi, um, who is a, a junior racer, and he was asking, "How does he get back to to racing?" So he's had a, a broken arm, he's broken his other arm, uh, and has had dramas with. And this is in his first year of or in one season of racing, um, and wanted to know, "Hey Christian, wanting to know about how to be able to build that confidence back up to be able to get out there for racing, be able to get out there for." For riding and, and being able to, to pick up where you left off. And now this is not something that many people talk about uh, generally in terms of coaches, riders, and racers. Kind of just get back on the bike and, and everyone expects to start going again. But when we do have accidents, we have injuries, we have crashes with racing, um, there is some sort of, there is going to be um, some sort of, um, what would, uh, trying, to, trying to find the word, there's going to be some sort of, uh, so there's going to be something holding you back for when you go. So you're not going to be as confident uh, when you go back into riding and racing. Um, there's going to be a little, you're going to be holding back a little bit on what you're actually capable of from where you were before because our body is our body is designed to be able to protect us, okay? Um, and when we're put in, in uh, situations that have caused harm to us, whether that's physically or mentally, um, then we're less likely to be able to go and do that same thing again. So think about this. Think about when you're a little kid, right? Mum and dad probably chasing you around with a wooden spoon um, every time you, you did something wrong, okay? Or they gave you a little bit of a smack or they yelled at you or they did something to be able to make you uncomfortable, okay? Um, or create some sort of fear. So they do this as a, a, as a protective mechanism, right? So if there's a, a hot stove full of boiling water up, up on the stove um, and you're trying to climb up there to, to rip it down, Okay, obviously they come over, they yell at you, or they come over and give you a little bit of a, a tap, a smack, depending on how you're brought up, maybe the wooden spoon, um, okay? And um, to, to teach you uh, that that's, not, that's uh, not what you do, okay? Don't do that, okay? Um, so that next time you see that, that, um, that pot of boiling water, you're not going to go anywhere near it because you know that last time mum and dad came over and gave you a little bit of a smack, gave it a wooden spoon, yelled at you, whatever it was, okay? They disciplined you. Now, the same thing happens with, with riding and racing as well, the exact same thing. So let's just say that you've been racing for a while, you've been doing a bit, and you go over a jump and you stack it on a jump. You have this massive crash over a jump, okay? And that ends up in a broken arm. So for you, Levi, this is answering your question specifically. You end up with, with a broken arm, okay? Then that means when you come back to racing and every time you approach a jump, you're going to be thinking about that broken arm that you got last time. You're going to be thinking about the last time you went over that jump, okay, and then end up, ended up in a whole lot of pain. Um, so the body doesn't doesn't like that. It wants you to try and avoid that. Now, obviously, we want to try and overcome that uh, from a mental standpoint. And the only way to be able to build that confidence back up is to be able to uh, bridge the gap between where you are now and getting back to where you were before. And what I think the, the common error is, a lot of riders and racers try and get back from injury. They try and take off from where they left off previously. Um, and this, this ends up causing more harm than good because they're just not ready for it, okay? And when we start to when we start to, to go out on the track and we're not 100% committed to what we're doing, then that's when we start to have more accidents, okay? So what will happen is if you had a big crash over a jump and you come back to racing and then you're trying to jump those same jumps straight away, you're not going to hit those... Um, hey, Ben, you're not going to hit those jumps... Um, with the same level of confidence that you did before. So instead of before hitting it with 100% certainty, now you're only hitting it with 80%. Now that 20% doubt, that 20% of uncertainty is what's really going to fuck you up um, and hold you back. Okay, so that's the, the thing that's going to cause more damage. So what you want to be able to work on is progressively improving your confidence um, and, and pushing up against that red line bit by bit. Okay, so that means that, okay, if you crashed over a big jump, don't go and tackle those same jumps on your first ride out, okay? Maybe don't even tackle any jumps. Maybe just go for a ride and get a feel for being on the bike. And then what you want to do is start to build that confidence again with jumping. So what you'll do is go and practice, hey, Dean, uh, break your foot. So that is the perfect example for you then, Dean. Something you'll be able, definitely be able to apply. 
So what we want to be able to, to, to work on is slowly building up that confidence again. So that might start off, okay, just working on some smaller jumps, okay? So if it was a bigger jump you crashed on, being able to work on just smaller jumps for a few weeks, for a few rides. Then being able to progressively get a little bit bigger, okay? Maybe only just working on tabletops first, then working to uh, working on to doubles and triples and bigger jumps and things like that. But it's all about being able to build that confidence up, not trying to start off where you left off from before, okay? You need to you need to start start at the, the feel like you you need to start at the bottom again, okay? You need to build yourself up, but obviously that that building up process is going to be a lot quicker than what it was before. So think about when you first started riding, right? Um, with jumps going riding and racing with jumping, right? Um, there would have been things that you can do now that you probably couldn't do three, four, five years ago when you were riding or racing, okay? So there might be bigger jumps that you jump now, um, corners that you do faster, okay? Uh, whatever it is. Um, so what that means is that when we are, uh, what we need to be able to do is apply that same approach when we come back from injury because our confidence is taking a hit. So the thing that was stopping us from not being able to perform the, to do those jumps that we can now do was confidence. And when we have an injury, it kind of pulls that back a little bit. So we need to be able to keep that in mind uh, and we need to be able to keep pushing forward um, but taking incremental steps um, at, in each ride and in each race to be able to make sure we build up to where we were before. Um, the biggest mistake you can make is just trying to... Trying to uh, trying to take off from where you, where you where you finished before, okay? Because you're just not there. Mentally, you're not there. You've had mentally, uh, there, there's been a, an accident, okay? There's been an issue. There's been a roadblock here for you, okay? And that's obviously what's happened with your accident. So your confidence is going to take a hit and that um, declining confidence is going to be something that can cause future injuries um, and future issues. This is something that you carry into uh, future riding and racing sessions uh, without taking the appropriate steps to build up that level of confidence, okay? Um, so our, our, what we want to be able to, to do is start to build that confidence, and that means maybe isolating certain drills, okay? Putting drills together um, and, and mapping. Again, this all comes back to goal setting and, and mapping. I'm very big on planning. Hey, Maddie, good to have you on the call, buddy. Very big on, on goal setting, okay? And, and you probably notice this all the time, all the guys that are watching a whole heap of live, or, or watching all these live streams, which is awesome, always talking about having a plan, having a program, having something to follow, mapping everything out. Um, and that's the same when you're coming back from injury. So if you've come back from injury, so in Levi's case, had a couple of broken arms, okay? Taking a fair, a fair decent whack to the, his level of confidence and self-esteem out on the track, uh, being constantly set back, um, you need to be able to have a plan in progress and that in pl a plan in place, um, and that is for your training and for your riding and racing. So with your riding and racing, being able to work on those areas that have um, have fallen back due to injury. Okay, so for in this example, if it's jumping, then working on jumping. Okay, making sure that you dedicate specific uh, times and days or specific riding sessions to be able to dedicate um, towards actually fixing those things. Okay. Um, to make sure that they do get fixed. Otherwise, then what starts to happen, hey, Jason, is that over the long term, you'll start to develop a weakness in that area. So let's just say um, you got hurt doing jumps, okay? You did a big jump and you hurt yourself and that's ruined your confidence for jumping. Now, the, the common thing will be, okay, um, hey, Brent, maybe we get caught into a another area where we go, okay, I don't want to do jumps anymore. Maybe you've lost a whole heap of confidence and you don't want to do any jumps, Okay. Um, and that means you go out and ride, you roll all the jumps now, you don't ride as hard, you don't ride as fast, you're not as confident, um, you don't get as good of results, you don't enjoy your riding as much because you know that you can perform better, um, you were riding heat better before but you're not now, and then this becomes a long-term weakness, so then because we're not jumping the jumps, we're not putting the effort in, we haven't had that structural plan in place after injury, um, then it starts to become an issue over the long term and starts to really be able to be a, a hole in your game plan. So the first thing we need to be able to do is make sure we have a game plan on with our riding and racing of eradicating that weakness that has come up through that injury. So if it's jumps, making sure that we're spending time with jumps and progressing that over the next weeks, months, however long it, um, the recovery process is going to be. Okay. Um, so we want to make sure that we overcome that. The only way to overcome that is by constantly progressing with it, okay? Um, not just trying to start at the top. We need to build up again. Uh, the other thing in terms of training uh, is something that I crack on about all the time, which is super important, is the ability to be able to train around injuries and still be able to maintain at minimum um, your level of fitness, okay? And this is a big one. So a lot of riders and racers, they have broken arms, broken legs, dislocated shoulders, whatever it is, Okay? Um, and they stop training. They take time off training, okay? 
Um, now, obviously, there are injuries where you're going to be forced to take time off training, okay? Obviously, in more severe cases, but what you're going to actually find is that in most cases, you'll be able to get back to training within a couple of weeks at least, okay? Um, so, like, for example, if you've got... We've had uh, riders and racers we've worked with which has had have dislocated shoulders, okay? Uh, people that have had... Or riders and racers that have had, like, shattered ankles, okay, that are coming back from rehab from that. Um, you're still able to train. The thing that stops you from training is your mind, Okay. Now that doesn't mean to train through pain. Never, ever, ever train through pain. What we want to do is train around um, the injury. It's making sure we're doing our rehabilitation, doing all the work that we need to do to be able to to get things sorted. But we want to be able to make sure that we train around um, the issues that have come up. Okay. Um, So that means, okay, let's say you've got you've broken your leg. Okay. Um, Then that means the rest of your body still works. There's still core exercises you can be doing. There's still upper body exercises you can be doing. There's still certain conditioning you can be doing to build your lung capacity. Okay, there's still a whole heap of stuff you can be doing. You can be working on your flexibility and mobility. Uh, times of injury should be the times that you end up the most flexible and most mobile you've ever been because you have more time than ever to be able to work on those things, okay? Often that's the thing that gets swept under the rug, the thing that gets cut down, that gets cut back, cut out of training, um, and the other stuff takes priority. So that's the, the one area that you can actually spend a whole heap of your time um, is being able to work on those things. And that means you can make improvement on the areas that you wouldn't otherwise have had time or um, had uh, made a priority to be able to improve with. Um, so you need, to be able to be, you need to be able to be smart about it. You need to be able to have, obviously, a level of common sense there. If you've got a broken leg, you're not going to try and do squats and lunges, okay, or jump on the leg press machine. It's just not going to happen. We need to be able to work around the injury, making sure that we're not causing any more trauma to that injury or affecting its rehab whatsoever. So that means if you get discomfort in that area, eh, don't do it. Okay, because we don't want to affect the, we don't want to continue training and continue trying to progress with our training and fitness, but um, add weeks and months onto our injury um, time. Okay, we want to get back to 100% as quickly as possible. Um, but the first thing we want to be able to do is make sure that we um, we keep that safe. We're doing our rehab stuff, and then secondly, then we can start to work on other areas of the body that we can start to improve. Okay, and what you'll find with injuries is usually there'll be there'll be things that have led to that injury. Okay. Um, so what, what that might mean is that, okay, um, uh, with your, your jumps, okay. Or with your, uh, going over the whoops, maybe there was something that led to that. So for some of you, maybe you find, okay, maybe you have most of your accidents. If you guys didn't see my post the other day, get that water in. Um, the, the main thing that we want to be able to, um, to, to, or what we are, you'll find is that with a lot of crash, crashes, okay. Or accidents. They happen at a particular time of the race. So look back at all your racing, right? Do you find that most of your accidents or crashes happen at a particular time of the race? Um, And then what you can link back to that is um, maybe it's fitness, maybe it's energy, okay? Maybe it's strength, maybe it's cardio. There's a whole heap of different things that can go into that. And that's something you can work on while you're recovering from injury as well um, to be able to help that. And what we also want to make sure is that with rehabilitation, we want to make sure that that injury doesn't occur again. Okay, we don't want to have recurring injuries. We don't have a, a stuffed knee this year and then get it uh, healed and then um, be back with a stuffed injury. We want to make sure we do all the rehabilitation correctly from our physio, from our chiropractor, oh, sorry, not chiro, from our physio um, or whoever we're working with. And then once, we, once we've moved from those initial stages, then being able to go and work with a strength and conditioning coach or someone that's um, good with movement and structural balance to be able to help build up the associated areas in terms of strength that's going to be adequate for the bike, okay? Because remember, physios are working with day-to-day people, uh, with day-to-day uh, activities. They're not working with someone who's throwing a 100-kilo bike around. Um, so you need to make sure that some, you have someone in your corner helping you with that to be able to have adequate levels of strength in that area to be able to go back to handle a bike, not just to handle getting in and out of your chair all day, okay? And there's a very big... Um, there's a very big... Uh, uh, difference between those two, okay? You need to make sure that um, you might you may have, like for example, you may have a knee injury, okay? Um, and that knee will be fine uh, when you walk, when you sit, but then you get on the bike and it starts getting really, really sore. Um, and that's because maybe the level of rehab you've done is only to the standard of day-to-day life, not the standard of actually riding and racing. And that's very important to note. Um, that comes on to another point, which is looking at prehab, prehabilitation, uh, making sure that you've preempted injuries in the future right now um, and being able to make sure that you have exercises and programming in place now that's going to help to prevent uh, as much as we possibly can any future injuries. 
So that means being able to have a structurally balanced body. Body. That means being able to move efficiently with your body. That means knowing how to move it. That means having the appropriate ranges of motion and mobility, okay? It doesn't just mean stretching and hanging on the end of your hamstrings. There's a lot more to mobility and movement than just um, hanging it in range on a muscle group, which is doing uh, fairly minimal in terms of long-term flexibility, okay? So prehabilitation is being able to preempt future injuries, being able to map out now uh, with your training, putting in corrective measures now to be able to make sure that in the future, we can minimize our risk of injury. And that's one thing that a lot of riders and racers miss. Uh, we tend to only get worried about things when they actually happen. Uh, when they haven't happened to us, we kind of don't worry about it, okay? It's like when we, uh, when, when we start putting on weight, that's when we start to eat healthy, okay? Uh, when we start to, to lose a shitload of energy, that's when we start to tidy things up, okay? When we start to be puffing out, going up the stairs at work, that's when we start to do some more exercise, okay? It's all um, very symptom related. We're, we're reacting, uh, rather than being proactive and, and getting in ahead, okay? And that's where, where we need to be. I mean, it's hard to be able to do that sometimes, okay? Because obviously you're focusing on... You're, a lot of people get caught up, or a lot of riders and racers get caught up in reacting to things that are happening rather than uh, being proactive and actually uh, being able to uh, preempt what's going to happen in the future and being able to put an action plan in place to stop those things from happening, okay? Um, a lot of us get caught up or sucked up um, into being able to being only only focusing on things when they happen, um, rather than focusing on things before they happen. When we focus on things before they happen, uh, that's when we start to really get um, a lot more consistency with our training, a lot more consistency with our racing, um, and our results are there as well. So I hope you, hope you guys have found this helpful. Good to be back on the live streams. Um, you guys can, uh, or if you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up. Um, likewise, if you have any friends, any riders or racers that you have at the track. Um, tag them below. Tag them in the live stream if they need to, need to hear this, they need to see this. There's someone that's coming back from injury. Um, tag them, let them know, um, and, and and be able to help them out as well as much as much as I want to help. Let me um, help them and let me help you as well uh, by being able to get them back to riding and racing as soon as possible. Um, so I hope you guys have had a great day. I hope you guys have had a great weekend. Um, and look forward to, to ha um, doing a few more live streams uh, again this week. Back into back into the Wi-Fi zone, which is awesome. All right, guys, uh, and remember, train hard, race harder. See you guys.